Hey guys, Super Godzilla Final Wars here, and today we are doing the review of Godzilla Singular Point, episode 10, my personal favorite episode. I'm pretty sure everyone can say that this is probably the best episode through the entire series, and let alone the season itself. So without further ado, let's get started. So, oh, our episode begins with the military, they are trying to predict Godzilla's movement. And of course, we see the G-Man in his terrorist form for now. He's just moving around. And I can I just say that I love that they are doing a Shin Godzilla reference? Because Godzilla's like basically moving his tail left to right, left to right. I basically did this for Snow Godzilla as well, so. But back then, that was a different company. Besides of that, uh, Godzilla apparently stops for some reason, and we soon see the reason why he stopped. A Rodan, what I'm assuming that it is Rodan, everyone is calling this Shadow Rodan, and other people are assuming that this Rodan is not related to the Rodans that are basically Godzilla's B, basically. So this Rodan charges his, his beam. Before he can attack, Godzilla charges his atomic breath, or smoke green, or an atomic like, ring, and hits Rodan, basically kills it, I'm assuming. Because we don't hear or see from this Rodan ever again. And Godzilla triumph. In, in triumph, he just walks away, victory, Showing his dominance over other monsters, basically showing them on who is the boss, who is the alpha, who is the king of the monsters. After intro, our human characters. Oh, sorry, I just got done eating. Um, our human characters basically drive around to an area of Tokyo that's basically not full of red smoke. And they can see that the entire sea is basically covered with red. So our human characters enter to the building. Well, it's the same library that we saw within episode one. They're trying to figure out the singular point stuff. We see a flashback for where our main character with Pado. Uh, we, apparently this was a scene where is it more like a flashback? But we cut back to present day. And someone's trying to steal the bag from our main character. But unfortunately Pat but fortunately Padu was managed to stop her. Her. And unfortunately for Padu, the same person tries to take um, Padu, but uh, our human characters free Padu, and we meet the daughter from the creep, the creepy guy, the creepy guy's daughter. Uh, she has apparently been looking for her. So they set off leaving one of our main characters behind. Uh, we cut to the military, they are talking about what I'm assuming is Gabra and not Godzilla. They are talking about that Gabra is back. We cut to our another main character, and he's a parent. Of course, we. C well, before we cut, go to that scene, uh, Team J Jaguars. Or is still trying to figure out about the singular point stuff, Majiggy. Um, but later, we go to our main character. He's at a restaurant with another main character. Then we cut back to Team Jet Jaguar. Still talk about how they're going to stop Godzilla. And we cut back to Team Padu. And we see that Gabra is back. 
Gabra is not dead, and he's actually alive. People thought within the last episode that Gabra was dead, but he actually is still alive. And he is bigger than he was before. Back then, he was small, but now he's big. And so, he is trying to find a singular point and destroy it. And the military is doing what they can to stop him. But of course, Gabber controls the red smoke. And of course, as usual, when it comes to giant monster films, more specifically Godzilla, things do not go so well. Because the military cannot destroy a giant monster unless you have a certain weapon that can penetrate its armor or something. Of course, the creepy guy, or the creepy scientist guy, comes back and that you're using the same stuff that they used on Gabra before. They're gonna try to use it again. And of course they end up using it and my god, this episode is just brutal. And I I don't understand how this mother freaker ain't dead. Gabra is still alive. I don't understand how this mother freaker ain't dead. Of course, the creepy guy's daughter comes and brings up uh, Team Pado within the picture. And then we get to the most epic scene in, of this entire freaking episode. The, the best scene of them all, and why everyone is probably assuming that this is the purse is probably the best episode of them all. <clears throat> We see Godzilla, he's being shot at a lot. And unfortunately, his territory's form does not appear to be taking out that many hits. People have been assuming that territory has a limit on how long he can stay in that form. Form. And that he could probably stay for 10 or 20 seconds, or 10 or 20 minutes. But what it feels like that how long Teratros has been walking, it feels like he's been in that form for at least what I'm assuming is five hours. Or eight hours, because it's nighttime. Anyways, Teratros evolved into Ultima, and my god, this, this Godzilla soundtrack is just the best one I've ever heard. Like, it's so cool. And you can see that Ultima has this devilish look in his eyes when he's walking towards the camera. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. When he's walking towards the camera, you can see that devilish stare at him. You can tell that this Godzilla is pure on aggressive. And the military's weapons apparently don't work on Godzilla now because he has more body armor, stronger body armor, and now, he is apparently unstoppable. <coughs> Sorry. Anyways, now we cut to the best, best scene of this entire episode. And everyone is saying that this is 100% <coughs> a Shin Godzilla reference. And I don't, and I don't disagree. This is like 100% a Shin Godzilla reference. Because Ultimate charges up his atomic breath a similar way how Shin Godzilla charged up his atomic breath. And we can see that that there are six rings when he's charging the atomic breath. And this is so cool. It's like he's op opening up a portal to a different dimension or something. And this Godzilla theme is by far the best one I've ever heard in my entire life. I'll have to do a top 10 favorite Godzilla soundtracks. Anyways, Godzilla fires his atomic breath, but at first it just melts stuff at first and people are assuming that this is his first time using it and other people are assuming that Ultima needs the rings to help him like concentrate hey, on where the atomic breath is going where it's gonna hit which direction it's gonna strike first basically that 
And I think that this is the first stage of the Atomic Breath. Like, it's just only the beginning before it grows stronger and more powerful. But for now, it's just melting and stuff. And this is so cool that how Ultima is basically destroying everything. Ultima is... This is why I keep on calling him, like, the God of Destruction. Like, you could see it. You can actually watch this episode over and over again, and you could see that, why he deserves that title as the God of Destruction. And that is where our episode ends. So, I hope you guys like this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to have a of excellence. And I'll see you in the next review, which will be episode 11. Peace out.